Yo, what's happening everyone? Welcome back to the Touchline Podcast. Not a podcast today. Today we're going to be doing a different type of video. We're going to be raising the question, is Khabib really the GOAT in MMA? And this is a really debatable topic that's, that, that I've seen make the rounds across the internet for, for many years. Uh, if you're new here, hit the like button, hit subscribe, comment down below. Let us know in the comments if we should do more of these videos. Again, we want to change up the style of our videos especially in the off season when, when food is not going on. So the reason why I'm really bringing up this topic today and doing this video today is because I uploaded a video yesterday from one of our podcasts talking about what Khabib said about receiving a $40 million offer to come back to the UFC and out of retirement by Dana White. And I said, long story short, I'll play the clip. Moving on, yeah, uh, about- our, our good friend Khabib Namagamedov <laughs> has said he was offered $40 million to come out of retirement. So this is what he said. He's like, should, should I do a little impersonation? It's up to you, you know. Brother, brother, it's not, it's not easy to just say it, uh, no to 20, 30, 40 million dollars. But for myself, it's not everything. This is not the most important. It was not an easy decision, but if I decide, I decide. So basically what he's saying is he turned out 20, 30, 40 million dollars to come back out of retirement to the UFC. So he's stubborn on the idea that he doesn't want to fight again mm. because of his father and whatnot. After, uh, yeah, after the... But the what, are you, what are your opinions on this, Anthony? Is it talking out of his ass? Like, honestly... I don't, I, I look, 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 to be honest, I want to pay five dollars for him to come back to the UFC. The only reason why I bring back Habib, Habib back to the UFC is so Conor McGregor can get his revenge on him. Really, is that, is that I what, didn't give a, is that your I, answer? I didn't give a rat's ass about this guy. This guy, this guy has done nothing for the sport. His value is nothing to this sport, really. I, look, everyone has their own opinions, yeah. their own sides. He you brings, know? Uh, yeah, okay. Like what do you say? Offering the saying? contracts, like, like offering the more money that to come back, forty million dollars. Right. For that Dagestani to come to the UFC, come back to the UFC, I get, I get yeah. he has some sort of draw power. Yeah. But for Khabib, but you know what? I'm gonna be fair with you. I think let the fans decide. I'll say if the fans 100%. think Khabib will come back. So long story short, I said I wouldn't pay five dollars for Khabib to come back to the UFC. Was I exaggerating? Maybe a little, maybe a little, just for the TikTok, just for the views, you know. Um, but really, there's some truth in that, man. Like, look. I'll get into it into this video, but there's two reasons why I don't like Khabib. The first reason is obviously because of the build up to the McGregor fight, the feud he had. And the second reason is I just don't like how people are just overhyped him over the years, saying he's the GOAT, he's not the GOAT. But I respect him as an athlete, yes. Really what, what Khabib only has is his fighting abilities. He doesn't have anything else. He doesn't, have, doesn't really have anything else. He doesn't have the personality. He doesn't have the trash talk. He doesn't have what, what makes a great uh, UFC fighter all together. I'm not just talking about fighting, fighting wise. Firstly, let's look at longtime MMA journalist Ariel Hawani. Let's see what he has to say about is Khabib the GOAT? If, if, if you think that Khabib's GOAT status wouldn't be affected by a loss to Gleison Tebow, you're insane. And if you even think that his current GOAT status, given his current record, isn't debatable, you're also insane. Only three title defenses. I agree with you. You're all out of your minds. I'm sorry, but you're out of your mind. You cannot compare. If everyone is available, you cannot compare his resume to John Jones's resume. You can't. You can't compare what he did to what Anderson Silva did. You cannot. You can't compare what he did to George St. Pierre. You can't compare it to even DC. You can't. I'm sorry. How is this even a question? And why do people take it so personally when you even question this? I'm not saying he can't be included. I'm not saying it's definitive, but... Just look at the numbers. Look at the resume. How could you even, like, based on factual evidence, compare the two? How? Explain me. Does anyone have a good... Not how good he could have been. Not the fact that there's a zero on the other side of the record. Just look at the defenses. Look at the resume. Look at the body of work. It's not comparable. The look, you just heard Ari Hawani was just saying, you're all out of your minds. He was even saying, you can't compare... Khabib's resume to John Jones, Anderson Silva, George St. Pierre, and even Daniel Cormier. Look, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. We're gonna get into all the statistics, but that's what Ari Hawani said. He's at the helm of all the journalism in MMA. He knows the ins and outs of the MMA. If he's saying that, look, I think it's true. We're gonna make our own judgment. We're gonna, we're gonna get to our own conclusion by the end of the video. As Ariel Hawani said, Khabib has only had three title defenses throughout his whole UFC career. Compared to the great MMA who has had multiple title defenses, you, they're actually uncomparable. Let's go through the list. So this is the top five title defenses in all of UFC. So at number five, we've got Jose Aldo. 
and Shevchenko. Aro, who we all know reigned for 10 years up until getting stopped by McGregor, obviously, has had seven title defenses. So number four on the list is George St. Pierre. He's, he finished his career 26 and two and has defended his title nine times in a row. Already he's smoking Khabib. Khabib and George St. Pierre are often compared just look at his title defenses, look at his record. I know he's got two, two uh, defeats on his record, but look at the title defenses. Number three on the list, Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva has defended his middleweight title for 2,457 days with 10 consecutive title defense wins. That's crazy. Prime Anderson Silva was absolutely mental. Going to the list at number two, Demetrius Johnson, Mighty Mouse, 11 total defenses. All right, he was at a lighter, lighter weight class, but 11 total defenses, that is crazy. And at number one, John Jones with 14 total defenses. And look, let's, let's put in perspective. He's had 14 total defenses and, Khab and Khabib has only had, in, a, in total, in UFC, 13 fights, not championship fights, 13 total fights. If that doesn't show already that Don Jones is already miles above Khabib, I don't know what will. See, just by judging total defenses, all these MMA greats smoke Khabib already. If we're gonna be talking about what makes a GOAT, you gotta look at the total defenses. It's one way of winning the belt, but it's another way of actually retaining that belt. These fighters have done it over, look, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 14 times. It's, again, it's one way of winning that belt, and there's another way of, it's, it's harder to even retain that belt. I reckon, I can argue, retaining the belt is harder than winning the belt. But anyways, let's move on to John Jones versus Khabib. So let's look at John Jones' resume. So he's 27, one and zero, compared to Khabib's 29, zero and zero. We all know what happened with that one defeat with John Jones, we all know it was all BS. Let's talk about Khabib's record. He was 16 and zero going into the UFC. You go look at the, the names he fought, nobodies. You had, you had people who had a ratio of way more losses than, than, than wins, really. Go look at the stats. 70% of Khabib's opponents were no names. That is a fact. Again, look, all right, I'll give it to Khabib. He only lost two rounds in the UFC. One to Gaethje, one to McGregor. You can't put past what John Jones has done on his resume. Legit mauled every single person in that light heavyweight division. He did it, look, he took a hiatus. I mean, we all know the controversies around John Jones, what happened. He took a hiatus, came back into a new division, into the heavyweight division, comes back and defeats Cyril Gunn for the heavyweight title. He does it across two weight divisions. Khabib only did it in one weight division. Yeah, that's another, another outstanding point as to why John Jones is above Khabib. Still talking about resumes, John Jones has remained undefeated for over 15 years in the UFC. He debuted in 2008 and he did that over 15 years. Like, you know how hard that is? That is a whole lifetime, 15 years. Some of you weren't even born 15 years ago. But look, if we're gonna look at it as a whole, this is, again, not me being biased, me just looking at the facts and the stats. John Jones has had the, has had a way better resume. All right, look, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to Khabib. He's had notable fighters on his resume. He's had Justin Gaethje, Dustin Poirier, Conor McGregor. All right, I'll give it to him there, but if we're gonna look at it as a whole, I think John Jones takes the cake for the overall resume. All right, now let's look at versatility between the fighters. Let's see who's a better all-rounder. Look, I'll give Khabib, he's a, I reckon he's, you can argue he's a, he's a better grappler than John Jones, but I reckon John Jones is a better all-round fighter. He's great on the feet, great on the ground. Khabib never really had that, never really had that striking game. Let's look at the stats. So John Jones has had a 58% striking accuracy to Khabib's 49% striking accuracy. Let's look at the, the grappling, let's look at the takedown defense. John Jones has had the most ever in the UFC with 95% takedown defense to Khabib's 85%. Look, again, you can argue who's a better grappler, but in my personal opinion, again, this, this shows I'm not biased. I reckon Khabib is the better grappler. Significant strikes, if we're gonna talk about if we're gonna be talking about the striking game, John Jones has had 65% significant strikes by standing, which is which really he's had 958 significant strikes in all of UFC career so far, to Khabib's 42% with 298 significant strikes. 
He's smoking on the standing game. That just shows John Jones is a way better striker than Khabib. I don't think even you Khabib fans, you're not going to deny that John Jones is a is a way better striker than Khabib. Let's let's split the resume apart. So Khabib has had five submission wins, six unanimous decision wins, with two t with two TKO slash KO wins in a total of 13 fights. John Jones has had six submission wins with 10 unanimous decision wins and split decision wins with a total of five KO slash TKO wins in 23 fights as of now. This really just shows John Jones is a better all-rounder fighter as to my points, as to the statistics I just said. Look, you can you can make your own judgment. You can always say Khabib is the better all-rounder fighter. Again, I'm gonna keep saying it. Women lie, men lie, numbers don't lie. Numbers are right there, just it's right in front of your face. John Jones is the better all-rounder fighter. Let's look at what Daniel Cormier has to say about Khabib being the greatest ever. The Eagle of Dagestan. Khabib Nurmagomedov, because you say, oh, three title defenses? Yeah. He could have had 20. Yeah, but he could have. He could have had 20 if Patrick he wanted Ewing could have had uh, Bo Zero Jackson. Titles. Bo Jackson could have had no, eight. No, but he was, Khabib left on his own terms, undefeated, undisputed, and it was getting worse. Prematurely, prematurely. Bro, it was getting worse. What do you mean? He was starting to beat people worse mm -hmm. as he stayed in the game. I agree. He has a case for greatest lightweight the of The greatest all time. fighter of Number all time. Two, Number two, Khabib. And I'll beep never up because I know and I can see down the line if he stayed, nothing would have changed. You say here with a straight face, regardless of your relationship with him, that he's the second greatest, greatest fighter, fighter of in all the history time. of fighting. There's only one person. <laughs> there's listen to me. There's only one person <laughs> what that's is going better. On? Who? Floyd Mayweather. It's a fine choice. 15, Floyd Mayweather, the greatest fighter of all time. Promoter. Rocky boxer. Marciano. See, that's the thing. Rocky Marciano. Floyd, Floyd, Floyd Patterson. Patterson. I mean, all, all the guys in the 70s and 80s. Yeah. I get it. I understand. But I reserve my one and two for the undefeated. And, and Rocky Marciano just didn't make the cut. I'm sorry. But he was undefeated too. But he didn't make the <laughs> cut. He didn't make the cut. So now that you watched the video, I can't believe what he said. Even Ariel Hawani is like, is this bloke being for real? He's like, about the title defense, he's like, all right. Khabib has had three title defenses, but he could have had 20. He could have had 20. GOAT status is not determined by he could have. All right, he, maybe he could have had 20, but did he get 20? No, he didn't get 20. It's not factual that he got 20. He only got three. That, that's what will be in the record books for the rest of time if it never comes back. And another thing what he said, I couldn't, but I couldn't wrap my head around this. He was saying he's the second greatest fighter of all time, not just MMA of all time in all of combat sports. That is a very big statement to say. So he put him under Floyd Mayweather. Look, let, 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 let's get into this. How do you put Khabib Nurmagomedov second greatest of all time? How do you put him past Julio Cesar Chavez, who was six time world champion in boxing? When Khabib was only three times did it in one division, I can't wrap my head. How do you put him past Sugar Ray Robinson? How do you put him past Rocky Marciano? How do you put him past Every one of those legends I just mentioned, John Jones, George St. Pierre, Jose Aldo, Anderson, how do you put him past these great fighters who have proven why they're the best with multiple title defenses and the way they dominated these divisions and the way some of them are multi, multi-division champions. It's crazy to think Daniel, the veteran in Daniel Cormier, I can't believe he said that. Is he coming from a biased perspective because he's best friends with Khabib? I don't know. But that, that really sent me, it sent Ari Hawani, that's for sure, he couldn't believe it. Even Floyd, how do you put Floyd Mayweather number one? All right, 15-0 record, multiple division champion. But let's, let's be honest, that, this is a different topic, but Floyd Mayweather picked his opponents. But anyways, now this leads me to my next topic. This is not really towards the GOAT status debate, but I thought I'd bring it up in this video. Is Islam Makachev better than Khabib Namagamedov? Let's get straight into it. Look, the more and more I watch Islam Makachev, the more I'm starting to believe he's becoming a way better fighter than Khabib Nurmagomedov. Look, you just go look at his resume so far. He's still at active, he's still in his prime Islam. Go look at his resume right now. Two title defenses thus far, all right? Two being back-to-back -back fights with um, Volkanovski, I get it. Two, again, Khabib's three title defenses in the lightweight division. Islam will, will be fighting Oliveira. He's gonna most likely win against Oliveira. So that will, that will boost his record to three title defenses. And I've heard Islam say the winner of Leon Edwards and Kobe Covington, he wants to face. 
you, we could be seeing Islam jumping a division, something Khabib never did in his career. So already there, he's he could be greater than Khabib. If we see Islam move up to 170 and beat the winner of Colby Covington and Leon or, or Leon Edwards, we could we could be saying. Islam could be one of the greatest of all time. Just as of that moment, we don't know yet. If, if he keeps racking up those title defenses, he could be the greatest of all time. I'm not gonna put it past Islam. And just let's look at the fighting style of these two fighters between Islam and Khabib. Islam is a, I reckon he's a more all-rounder fighter in comparison to Khabib. You go look at Islam, Islam's striking game. He outnumbers, really outnumbers Khabib. Go look at the way he outstriked um, Charles Oliveira in, in the first fight. And the way he knocked out Volkanovski. We all know Volkanovski is a brawler, as a striker. He knocked him out in his own game. It didn't even bring him to the ground. Look, then again, look, Volkanovski didn't have a full camp. We, we, we all get it, we, we all heard the story. But he still knocked him out. Go look at Khabib. Khabib really just took you down. Mauled you on the ground, got the ground control time. Like that's really the only thing he had in the octagon. We never saw Habib land those powerful shots. We saw it against McGregor. All right, he knocked. I think he was McGregor's first knockdown in his career. But then again, we never really saw Habib knock out his opponents. Really, if we're gonna compare grappling ability, Habib is a better grappler. I'm gonna, I'm gonna always say it. The way Habib will maul his opponents in elite fighters like Dustin Poirier and Justin Ga Gaethje, you can't put it past him. Minus my biased opinions about him, put that to the side. He's a great grappler. Is he better than Islam? Yes. Cardio and durability wise, I reckon Habib is is better. He's better in a way just by, by a slight advantage because we saw what Volkanovski did to Islam in the first fight where he took him to troubled waters and really figured out the Dagestani way of fighting. No one really did that against Khabib. No one really could figure out Khabib. I, I like watching Makachev because he's an all-round fighter and he could potentially be one of the greatest of all time. Um, if he keeps, again, racking up those title defenses, maybe wins two belts in two different divisions, something, again, Khabib never did. Right now, as it stands, Khabib is better, but Makachev, mark my words, will be better than Khabib when it's all said and done. Let's, let's, let's draw a final conclusion. Let's get back on topic. Is Khabib Namagamedov really the GOAT in MMA? My final verdict is no. No, he's not. Again, I'm gonna keep repeating myself. I'm sounding like a broken record right now. It comes down to overall resume, total defenses. What do you, he didn't do in two different divisions like most of these fighters on this list did. How are you gonna consider someone the GOAT when there's others that beat him in other avenues? Look, don't get me wrong, Khabib is an exceptional fighter. I've said at the start of this video, but do I think he's pound for pound number one GOAT, second greatest fighter of all time according to DC? No, I don't. At most, I think he's top 10. I, again, you can't put past what he did in the UFC. More the lightweight division, yes. But he is at most top 10. Top 10. Top 10. Oh, you can make an argument he's one of the greats, one of the GOATs in the UFC. In my personal opinion, I reckon John Jones is the GOAT in MMA and forever will be the GOAT in MMA. Because he's still active right now. He's still he's, he's the active heavyweight champion. But I feel like he will continue to he will continue to dominate up until he retires. He is the greatest of all time. That's it. Done and dusted. Anyways, that's it for that video. If you liked the video, hit the like button, comment down below, subscribe if you're new. Let us know again if you like these type of videos. We could be bringing you guys the NRL type of videos. We can be bringing you guys. I know the boys like to do the soccer videos. That would bring you guys those types of videos those debate topics if you like them and uh yeah catch you guys later